Good morning. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to the 15th annual meeting of the European Meteorological Society and the 12th European Conference on Applications of Meteorology, short EMS and ECAM. My name is Horst Böttger, if you don't know me, and uh, I'm the president of this society. The 12th Conference on Applications of Meteorology runs in parallel or alongside the uh, annual meeting, and this always happens in Odd years, even years, we have the uh, climate uh, applications conference. Let's see how this works now. Uh huh. Help. Here we are. The conference theme this year is high impact weather and hydrological hazards from observation to impact mitigation. High impact weather is a very topical issue and uh, high impact weather usually also triggers or often triggers hydrological hazards. Scale may range from flash floods to large scale flooding of rivers and it's, it's something that of course uh, is a concern to all of us. What is also new in our conference this year is the emphasis on observations. We have introduced new sessions on observations and we hope that this will be attractive and will it also attract new participants, in particular those who have been missing observations like the industry in the past. And uh, it's, it's something that uh, we would like to develop in the future. The oral and poster session program, those who have been to previous meetings uh, are familiar with that. There's a color code also for the uh, overview page in the program book. And we have the conference on applications of meteorology as one big block. We have the atmospheric science, the system and its interactions. We have a climate block, so climate does not disappear when uh, we run the application of meteorology and the same happens when we have the climate conference running alongside the uh, uh, EMS uh, annual meeting, then there is still something on application of meteorology. We have a session on communication and education and we have the numerical weather prediction. And something which is barely visible now is the new program block on measure, measurements and observations. And please be aware that there is a very extensive uh, poster exhibition here during the conference. And in each session, there will be a brief introduction to these posters which are relevant for that session. We also have special events. There's an exhibition which runs from Monday today at after afternoon until Thursday evening, which will be in the foyer here uh, outside, outside the conference rooms. There will be an awards, sir, and, and I recommend that you visit the exhibition because uh, it may be a small exhibition, but there will always be some useful and in interesting things there. The awards uh, ceremony will take place tomorrow afternoon, which will include the uh, uh, presentation of the silver medal and the lecture of the uh, laureate. Also, the Harry Otten Foundation uses the conference to present their Harry Otten Prize for Innovation in Meteorology. Uh, that will happen during the uh, award ceremony tomorrow afternoon. And today they are busy to listen also to the presentations by the finalists and then select the, the winner of the prize eventually. On Wednesday there will be a big plenary called the Great Debate on Big Data in Meteorology and uh, we, this is already a tradition that every uh, conference has one big 
uh, plenary session, which then is, is, can be a round table, first of all, and uh, can then uh, go into question and answer session. At this point, I would like to thank everybody who has contributed to organizing this conference. I don't want to mention, as has been done by the previous president, don't mention anybody in particular. You're bound to forget somebody, is the advice. So this is a blanket say thank you to all who have contributed. Thank you. A little bit of propaganda for the future. Next, next year's conference will be in Trieste, running from the 12th to the 16th of September, and it will be uh, running, as I mentioned before, alongside now with the Conference on Applied Climatology. We are launching a new award this year, which is the EMS Technology Achievement Award. It uh, will be granted to individuals or organizations. It will be issued uh, annually, uh, and nominations can come from EMS member organizations or from individuals. And it will be given in recognition of technological contributions associated with instrumentation and methodologies used in metrology and related sciences and the applications that have the potential for Europe-wide impact. And there is some emphasis on that Europe-wide impact. The areas where this may be granted is in instrumentation measurements, data acquisition, data handling, data analysis techniques, and algorithms and information systems along with technological developments, underpinning forecasting methods and verification, validation verification techniques. So it's it really the emphasis is on technology it is not uh, an award that, that will be given for some brilliant results in, in scientific research into whatever you like to mention at that point. So technology is the issue here. And uh, I mentioned uh, there will be a specific selection committee for this award and it will be launched this autumn and the deadline already uh, for the submission of nominations is the 15th of January next year. We will also run uh, again this year, because it only happens about every second year, the Euro Photo Meteo uh, competition, which is very popular. Again, submissions will be opened up. You are allowed to submit one photo, not more than one, and uh, the uh, winning entries will be announced uh, next year in March. And then there will be, I'm sure, an exhibition of the winning pictures uh, and the close run-ups uh, at the next conference. Okay, all I can say at this point, have an interesting conference. There will be an icebreaker tonight uh, here in the foyer at quarter past seven and it will be co sponsored by the Harry Otten uh, Prize Foundation. And uh, I should also mention the announcement of the outstanding poster, which will be selected during the week from the posters on display. And that will happen at the end of the conference, uh, just after lunch on Friday, when we have the little closing ceremony in the foyer. And that takes me to the end of my short introduction. We now have a series of welcome addresses and uh, the first one will start with Tanya Marinova from the National Service here in Sofia, I guess. Please. Now, you have to apologize because there have been some changes compared with this list here. I may announce the wrong person at some stage, but uh, I'm sure we can fix that. Thank you. Okay. Distinguished, distinguished guests, dear participants, dear organizers of the meeting, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the director of the National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology at the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, Professor Christomir Branzov, and on, on my own behalf, it is an honor and pleasure for me 
to congratulate you on the occasion of the 15th annual meeting of the European Meteorological Society and the 12th uh, European Conference on Application of Meteorology, and welcome all of you in Sofia. The meteorological and hydrometeorological services all around the world have their significant role in the country's life. They provide services to a wide range of consumers, from the ordinary people interested in what the weather will be in a particular day, to the special bodies responsible for prevention from disasters of hydrometeorological origin. They work to ensure the economics and the society of the country with necessary information, information products, and one of the most important, to warn on time uh, the people and decision makers for potentially dangerous weather phenomena to inform and advise them uh, on how to prevent, reduce, and mitigate their impact. In the context of the extreme events in Europe and around the world during past decade, events that caused the loss of hundreds of human lives and damages for million euros, uh, the theme of this year's conference on application of meteorology high impact weather and hydrological hazards from observations to impact mitigation is highly relevant and very welcome. It is a well-known fact that the atmospheric processes and phenomena do not recognize frontiers. The studies and modeling of such processes is a very complicated task and needs uh, the united efforts of many experts, observers, meteorologists, hydrologists, and analyzers, programmers. The meteorological community is on the way to elaborate a common vision for fast development of provided services to profit from the most modern instruments and practices necessary to ensure perfect services to people, governments, and all direct and, uh, and indirect users of hydrometeorological information. Forums like this are the perfect place for sharing experience, achievements, and ideas. Allow me to point your attention to the fact that the collaboration with European Meteorological and Hydrometeorological Services has left a serious and stable imprint on the complete activity of the Bulgarian Hydrometeorological Service through the long years of its, its existence. I do believe that these meetings will contribute to building a better dialogue to serve for strengthening collaboration among meteorologists from whole Europe, elaborating plans and projects for the benefit of the countries in the region, and the presentations and discussions will give possibility to exchange good practices, new ideas, and information. Accept my sincere wishes for interesting and useful meeting and every future professional and personal success. Enjoy your stay in Sofia. The next speaker will be Ekaterina uh, Bac Bacvarova, and you can introduce yourself, please. Yes, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear distinguished guests. On behalf of the very new Bulgarian Meteorological Society, we are only five years old uh, organization. Welcome in uh, Sofia, welcome to this uh, event. Um, we uh, are here all the, the week. You recognize us with this sign, uh, Bulgarian Meteorological Society. And uh, any questions you have, please come and ask anybody of us that uh, we are around. Uh, now, instead of telling more about our society, I would like to uh, read for you uh, an address uh, from the President of Republic Bulgaria that we got last week uh, for the conference. And uh, it is because uh, his staff is uh, very much occupied this morning. Uh, they are not here, but the most important is that uh, at high level in the country, the uh, uh, meteorological science, the work uh, that uh, we are doing uh, in order to uh, um, forecast, announce, uh, warn about uh, hazards, 
this work uh, is recognized. So, uh, Mr. Rosen uh, Plevneliev, the President of uh, Republic of Bulgaria, uh, tells to us, dear organizers and hosts, dear participants and guests, I congratulate you with the 15th meeting of the European Meteorological Society uh, and uh, the 12th European Conference on Applied Meteorology. Hosting this event shows acknowledgement of the achievements of the Bulgarian sciences, uh, scientists and uh, their uh, role in the collaboration uh, in research uh, in uh, Europe. The climate-related policy is uh, uh, among the priorities of all European countries as changing climate uh, requires coordinated and focused common actions. The integration of high technological achievements of science and industry in the meteorological observations the analysis, but also handling it and exchange of data secures effectiveness of the policies, of the political measures for avoiding ecological catastrophes and reduction of the socioeconomic uh, loss during natural hazards. Today, the development of meteorological science is a focus of attention as climate change influences stronger and stronger all spheres of life. The present day meteorology is not possible without improvement of numerical forecast and uh, continuous exchange of data from all distant locations in the world. For me as president, it is important that the research in the fields of meteorology is supported and funded adequately in Bulgaria. The applications of meteorology are important for all sectors of uh, life. I wish success to the conference. I believe that um, <clears throat> this scientific event and the results of it contribute to the basis of the new technologies of the future for uh, better uh, dealing and uh, preventing high losses at natural disasters. So, welcome again. Thank you. Next speaker will be Paulina Valsanova from the other society. Please. Thank you. A dear Mr. President of the European Meteorological Society, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great privilege and pleasure for me to welcome you on the 12th European Conference on Application of Meteorology. I would like to greet you on behalf of the Avio Meteorological Club Bulgaria, which is a member of the EMS since 2003. This is three year, uh, four years before Bulgaria was accepted as a member state of the European Union. With its 36 member societies and 32 associate members, the EMS has grown to be a respected partner and player in the meteorological community in Europe and has developed an extended forum for dis uh, discussions on the challenges in meteorology. Avio Meteorological Club Bulgaria is a small professional club formed among meteorologists working for the air traffic controllers. Although our society is small, we have big dreams and ideas. One of those dreams is taking place right now. We are now part of such an international scientific forum and now this forum knows that we exist as a society. Moreover, for the first time, our club has its own participants in the conference. As a club, we would like to express our thanks 
to the Bulgarian Air Traffic Service authorities, Bulatsa in short, which, are, uh, which we are part of, and to Mr. Pev, the General Director for the financial support to our club, for agreeing to offer their sponsorship in order for us to host this conference. Again, allow me a few words on behalf of Mr. Pev. He clearly recognizes and respects the importance of aviation meteorology within the complex system of the air traffic management as a whole. Weather conditions are a key factor to air traffic management operations. They are of high importance to the initial element, such as the variation of head and tail wind component, changes in pressure, temperature value at airports, and thus the necessity of imposing low visibility operating conditions when necessary. Adverse meteorological conditions have the great impact on the ATM systems. They create disruptions of which the consequences are disturbed flow rates, low capaci lost capacity, and induced additional cost. Beyond any doubt, meteorology is absolutely essential for air traffic management today and in the future. The Bulatsa Met experts face challenges every day with which I dare say we are well prepared in terms of coping with any problems that may arise. It is of great importance to maintain and improve our professionalism. Bearing this in mind, this conference will provide a platform for com communication and exchange of ideas and experience. I strongly believe that this conference will be of great interest and benefit and its final reserve result will surpass our expectation. I would also like to wish you all very enjoyable stay in Bulgaria. And finally, I hope that you, that, uh, you will find this conference both a highly professional and rewarding event. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you. I've been reprimanded. That's the wrong picture. Here you go. Next speaker is uh, Paul uh, Gorgierov. He's the Vice Minister of, in, of the Ministry for Environment and Water. Dear ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Environment and Water, I have the pleasure and honor to welcome the participant in the EMS annual meeting and the European Conference of Application of Meteorology hosted by National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology at the Bulgarian Academy of Science and the State Enterprise Bulgarian Air Traffic Service Authority. The wide range of topics that will be discussed at the forum are related to weather forecast with warnings about the hydrological and meteorological hazard and climate variation, stressing the importance of the conference. Climate change is among the greatest challenges that humanity will have to face in the coming years. Rising temperatures, melting ice, more frequent doubts, droughts and the flood are proof that climate change is a fact and the risk for the whole planet for the future generation is enormous. Therefore, we need to take urgent measures. The fight against climate change should lead to a new global deal. Paris will host the 21st United Nations Conference on Climate Change from November 3rd to December 11th. The aim is that a common agreement will be adopted by maximum number of countries entering force into 2020. At the Global Conference in Paris, at the end of this year, we expect a legally binding document between parties to the Convention on Climate Change to be signed in order to achieve desired objectives. The analysis of the expected extreme climate events indicates that the number and intensity 
of the dry and hot summer periods in Bulgaria will increase. Droughts and floods, heavily rainfalls, as well as the adverse natural events and process related to these challenges will occur more and more frequently. The summary results of the analysis indicate that climate change will be affect all economic sector and for the most of them are noted not only adverse effects but also opportunities with favorable effects. The action related to adoption create new opportunity to improve life quality, to encourage sustainable development, to stimulate investments and innovation, and also to activate the involvement of stakeholder and multilateral cooperation between them. The Ministry of Environment and Water relies on the combined effort of scientists and experts. There is recognized need to deepen the cooperation between research institution and the government throughout the dialogue between science, state and society in order to address the challenges we face. The Ministry of Environment and Water initiated a process of the development of national strategy for adaptation to climate change. All competent institutions should complete their work on the strategy by the end of 2017. The strategy should include measures to decrease our country's vulnerability due to climate change and to improve the capacity and to adapt the natural, social and economical system to the invariable negative impact of climate change. The National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology is our partner and has the responsibility to act as the only organization in Bulgaria performing monitoring, evaluating and prognosis of amount of water. The institute develops and maintains in operation the specialized early warning system in case of natural disaster of hydrometeorological origin. In this regard, the Institute received support, including financial support, by the Ministry of Environment and Water, and we have signed an agreement for dedicated budget funding for fifth consecutive year. The National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology performed specific tasks that assist the Ministry of Environment and Water and the Bosen Directorates in the implementation of European legislation. I would like to welcome all conference participants and to wish you successful and fruitful work. Thank you very much. Okay. The next presentation is now not given by the person who is on the list, but Ekaterina will come back and uh, will write, read out a statement on behalf of the Ministry. So I have the honor to uh, read or translate <laughs> uh, here directly uh, an address from the Minister of uh, the Ministry of Regional Development, Mrs. Uh, Liliana Pavlova, uh, to the conference. Most important is that the theme of the conference and all the work of the meteorological uh, um, community in Bulgaria and the institutions in particular the National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology are uh, the uh, uh, um, providers of information that is absolutely vital for the work of the Ministry of Regional Development, uh, which also uh, has uh, the task to deal with the impact of natural hazards. So uh, the address uh, is mainly to thank uh, all the scientists and the organizations that uh, uh, perform this work and it is really uh, appreciated, their work is appreciated 
uh, and uh, uh, the ministry is thankful for it. Uh, it is also important to note that uh, in a greater frame, the ministry has agreement with the Academy of Sciences, so all the, the achievements uh, within geophysical sciences and uh, other related topics that are developed in the Academy uh, are in uh, play, are playing a role uh, when uh, forming the policy. Uh, the same uh, goes also for the Ministry of uh, Environment and Waters. There is a, a frame of collaboration between the Academy of Sciences and this uh, ministry. So, thank you. Congratulations from this ministry. Yes, thank you, Ekaterina. Okay. Uh, I think the last in the series of uh, Bulgarian speakers is now uh, Nikolai Milosev, and he is the Vice President of the Bulgarian uh, Academy of Science. Good morning, distinguished guests. Good morning, dear conference participants in the 15th EMS and the 12th ECAM meeting. I have the honor to welcome here you on behalf of the Bulgarian scientific community. Our Bulgarian Academy of Sciences is the largest research center in the country, hosting the work of about 3,000 scientists in all natural humanitarian sciences and responsible for more than 60% of the published scientific results of the country. The research and operational work in the field of meteorology and hydrology are hosted by the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences since the 50s of the former century. The National Institute on Meteorology and Hydrology is the largest research institute of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences due to the operational activities covering the entire country. Most of the international annual fees to international organization that our academy pays are also related to the National Institute. These are the, uh, those of WMO, AOMED, SAT, and others. So that the management of BAS is always discussing this institute. But the largest coverage in media related to BAS is also coming from the activities of the National Institute. Forecasting the weather <coughs> and the river water conditions is needed both for getting good news and to be prepared for national disasters. The importance for the society and economics of the hydrometeorological observations, analysis, forecasts, and warnings is clear and well understood all over Europe. Hosting this event in Sofia is from one side a sign that the Bulgarian scientific community in meteorology and hydrology is recognized in Europe, and from another side allows more than 40 scientists instead of less than four to participate the various sessions and to benefit from the communication opportunities that this meeting provides. I wish you a successful meeting, discussions and collaboration in developing meteorological and hydrological sciences and bringing the results in wider use for the benefit of the society. Thank you. Next speaker will be Will Lang. And he, will, uh, he is the uh, representative of the ECAM interest group and also the program group chair. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> Thank you, Horst. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the ECAM program of this meeting and uh, again to kindly thank our Bulgarian colleagues for inviting us to this beautiful city. So ECAM is the European Conference on Applications of Meteorology. And what I love about meteorology is that so much of it is applied. We are nothing if we're not useful. We're at our best when addressing real world problems. Indeed, high impact weather, uh, which is the theme of this meeting, might be defined as where meteorology uh, meets these big issues of the modern world. And to do this, we're constantly developing better understanding, better models. We're exploiting vast new resources of data, 
and we'll be talking about that in our session on big data on Wednesday afternoon. And we're also developing, perhaps most importantly of all, more effective links with our users and our customers. But I believe we've only just scratched the surface of how useful we can be. We only have to look in the newspapers every day to events like the current refugee crisis in Europe to see how these real-world problems cross borders and can affect us all. Knowledge of weather and climate can be very important in these issues. And one of the ways our meteorological community can play a role in addressing them is to ourselves work across borders, collaborating, sharing knowledge for the benefit of all. I believe that as European applied meteorologists, we have a duty to serve not just our own citizens, communities, and businesses, but also to play our part in improving the situations of those less fortunate than ourselves. So here we are in Sofia. Our annual meetings are always interesting, always enjoyable, and I hope we all take the opportunity to learn about each other's work to enjoy the city as well, but also to develop those friendships and networks across organizations, which will be the fruitful collaborations of the future. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Next speaker is Ingeborg Auer. She is the uh, UMITNET representative in the climate program. And uh, there you go. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, distinguished guests, dear participants. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you here in Sofia at this ICAM EMS meeting on behalf of UMITNET Climate Program. You know, we are living in a world with a changing climate and with extremes all over the globe. And the information about the, those events is uh, communicated in a, in a speed which hasn't been known before. Uh, so the climatologists are really challenged to have all information ready, which is necessary, to deal with such events. Therefore, therefore also UMITNET supports special climate programs uh, which help to fulfill this. I want to mention, for example, data rescue. There are a number of mi millions of data which are still in archives, which haven't uh, been digitized up to now. And this means that they are not available for research. They are not available for the society. Because climate change today is not only a problem of science, it's a problem of our society, because everybody is affected. And UMITNET Climate is also supporting um, data, data, um, data projects. For example, I want to mention the ICA&D database, which uh, is uh, managed by KNMI, where all the data are uh, collected and are made available as data themselves, but also in, uh, in climate indices that uh, they really are ready for applications. And UMITNET Climate is also um, interested to look on uh, climate impact. So it supports also phenological data, a phenological database, which means that, um, because you know, um, the plants and um, animals are really reacting on, on climate and to, to have the context between these two, uh, there is a phenological database where you really uh, can see that um, flowers are now growing earlier or the leaves are falling down later. So there are a number of projects which are really uh, supported by UMITNET Climate and this all is in the context with the support to Copernicus uh, Climate Services because it's very important for the UMITNET that climate, Copernicus Climate Services are supported. So uh, what I can do now is to wish you an interesting conference um, to, 
to wish you a good networking and maybe also to find some friends here in Sofia. Thank you. The next speaker is Robert Muro, and he is from the Association of Private Med Services. Thank you, Horst. On behalf of Primet, the commercial better providers, I'd like to welcome you to this meeting. It's a very interesting meeting. Primet is looking forward to it very much. It's about science and applications. And uh, hydrometeo and severe weather are a massive challenge for meteorology in a world where disasters do not fit anymore. We want the world to be perfectly organized, so we have to work very hard on understanding the science and the dynamics of the severe weather and of particularly developing practical, useful applications. The commercial parties can play a role in that. So, Primate is certainly looking forward to this meeting and the science and the applications presented and we are looking out for opportunities to collaborate with the scientific institutions to help uh, bridge the gap between science and the local decision makers. Because really, that is what it's all about. It's, it's about the weather, it's about understanding the weather, it's about forecasting, getting it right, but ultimately it's about making the right decisions at the local level and the national level. So, I keep it brief. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the Republic of Bulgaria and the city of Sofia for their, well, for their hospitality. And I'd like to thank, like Horst did, everybody involved in organizing this meeting for their hard work on getting this meeting going. Thank you very much on behalf of Primate. Thank you, Robert. <coughs> now we haven't got a speaker has been a short-term cancellation from the uh, Association of uh, Hydrometeorological Equipment Industry. Uh, so all I can say is that uh, there were circumstances that we couldn't do anything about. But they have always been very supportive. They used to participate in the exhibition and uh, the, uh, uh, also were lobbying in the industry to, for people to come to the conference. I hope they will be back on, of course, we'll expect that next year, and uh, Fuke Koik, who is uh, uh, looking after us uh, from, from that association, he gave the indication that this will certainly happen next year. So, I can't offer you a speaker, but uh, we're looking forward to see them again next year. <coughs> that brings me to the last speaker of this morning, and that's uh, Alexander MacDonald from the American Meteorological Society. Sandy, if you address the meeting, please. Well, I'd like to uh, thank the <coughs> European Meteorological Society for inviting us here to this beautiful city. Um, I think our profession has a great responsibility worldwide the uh, issue of weather and certainly the issue of climate change is a profound and important responsibility that we have. Um, as uh, director of NOAA's Earth System Research Lab in Boulder, Colorado, I've been privileged to uh, lead a group of about 600 scientists uh, in their worldwide efforts, they have, uh, we have the uh, uh, famous observing site at Mauna Loa that's tracked carbon dioxide since the 1950s. Uh, have a number of scientists, Susan Solomon and others, that have played a major role in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The American Meteorological Society was founded in 1919, so we're about to celebrate our 100th anniversary. Uh, we are um, a society of about 14,000 members. Uh, our meeting this year in January will be in New Orleans. Uh, I guess all I can say about New Orleans is uh, I bet it's gonna be warmer than Europe, so you better come. Um, 
it's, uh, it's also usually pretty sunny, although the last meeting we had there, it, uh, it poured rain the entire time. Our theme is Earth System Science in Service to Society. Uh, I believe that we have powerful new tools. It is really conceivable that we could have arrived at this point in history with seven billion human beings and a growing standard of living that put huge pressure on our environment without the tools that we have. But we have these tools, but we have to avail ourselves and use these tools. I'm referring to the incredible range of environmental satellites. I'm referring to computers that are working their ways from uh, petaflops and beyond. I'm referring to our understanding of how the atmosphere and the ocean works. So this concept of earth system science in service to society is something that I see very much in the plans for this meeting uh, of EMS. I looked at the sessions. The ability to make weather predictions and predict where a hurricane is going to be in five days uh, is extraordinarily important to society. And um, we are going to be in New Orleans, as I mentioned. <clears throat> New Orleans was the site 10 years ago of the uh, worst recent disaster in the U.S., the Hurricane Katrina disaster, uh, took close to 1,900 lives, uh, cost probably $100 billion, um, and actually the forecasts were uh, uh, moderately good. So we're going to look at that. You can't just think about a forecast where you tell people what's going to happen it ultimately, our science has to work its way out to how do we affect people's decisions? What do they do? And that's nowhere more important than in climate change. A second disaster in the southern Louisiana area was the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Uh, in that case, uh, we probably should have been able to stop that in about five days. <clears throat> Instead, it went on for three months. It partly went on for three months because of our lack of understanding uh, of how uh, that sort of a system works. We estimated at first that there were a thousand barrels of oil coming out of the bottom. Uh, the engineers tried to cap it based on a thousand barrels of oil. It turns out the rate was 50,000 barrels of oil. And as soon as they knew it was 50,000, uh, they were able to design a system that stopped it. So knowledge of how geophysical systems, not just the atmosphere, but the ocean and the biology and the chemistry are a part of our science. So when I say earth system science, I include all of those. The uh, future, of course, is problematic. Uh, we live in an exponential growth of, of many things and uh, our answers in climate uh, are crucial. So the uh, current sensitivity uh, over say the last few IPCC is we know that the uh, temperature rises should be 1.5 degrees C to 4.5. That's very poorly constrained. It's sort of like saying, well, the hurricane is going to hit somewhere between uh, southern Texas and uh, Florida. We have to constrain that. The ability to constrain it comes from our societies. Uh, we've been working with EMS. We've been working, we at AMS have been working with uh, the Chinese, uh, the Indians, and we believe it's crucial that we uh, jointly face these problems that the world faces and constrain and understand and help society with these problems. Uh, I'll mention one more thing. This is a conference on high impact. Uh, there have been high impact events in the past that we need to think about. One of those was the uh, volcano Tambura in 1815 that essentially ruined the crops of uh, Western Europe and Eastern United States, freezing and snow in July. 
These are the kind of events that could come in the future. Uh, at conferences like these and among our scientists, we're the people who can deal with these. Very recently, Dr. James Hansen uh, makes an argument that the retrograde valleys of Antarctica, where there appears to be a great deal of warm water coming in, could generate as much as four meters of sea level rise in a few decades. It's our science working together around the world that are going to address these issues. I'm very proud to represent the American Meteorological Society and I look forward to uh, what looks to me to be a very uh, wonderful and exciting meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Let me just... Okay, that takes us nearly to the end of the opening. Uh, since I will not be here, I'm afraid, on Friday for the closing, I would like already express my thanks to the local organizers for fixing us up here, uh, helping, giving us all the help that we get during this week and making this a very successful meeting, of course. So thanks a lot and thanks uh, to the Bulgarian Med Society for hosting this meeting. Um, as I say, I won't be here on Friday, but uh, I'm sure lots of people will be and will be attending the end of and the closing of the sessions on Friday. Okay, there's a coffee break now, and after that, we will go into the uh, strategic lectures, uh, which will set the scene for the th for the theme of the conference. And uh, I'll be back. I hope you will all be back at uh, 11 o'clock sharp here for this meeting. Thank you. <laughs>